Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to antique a violin. How to make it look like an old violin. So I had been searching for years for an antique violin, something that had heritage and history behind it. And what I found was I couldn't find one for cheaper than $150. Actually $150 was uh, an expensive one for an antique violin, so it was $150 and up. And where I had found the one for $150 was actually from a thrift store that had a silent auction and that was the final bid on it. But I wasn't willing to pay that much. I'm sorry, I'm thrifty, I just wasn't. So I decided, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try to make my own antique looking violin. Now I've already done this one because I didn't have our little thrifty cottage up and running our websites and our Instagram and all those awesome social media accounts. I didn't have it up and running when I actually antique this one. But I'm gonna take you guys through the steps of what I did when I did antique this one. I knew what it was fun. So first of all, what I did was, is I put a general call out, um, I guess an ad on Marketplace asking for uh, referrals or if anybody had an old violin that they were wanting to part with. Now the response I got back, of course, people were wanting to sell their violins because they no longer were um, playing them. But again, I did not want to spend a fortune um, musical instruments are expensive because of the beauty of what they are. And I didn't want to, um, you know what, I didn't want to sacrifice a usable instrument. Now one day I'll take you for a little tour around our beautiful little cottage. And we do have a few instruments hanging up on the walls. Instruments that we don't play, that are no longer playable. But they are antique or vintage. And the reason why is I've got just this really strong connection to musical instruments. I don't know why. If I'm at a thrift store, if I'm at a garage sale, if I'm searching, you know, any of the used sites and I see an instrument, I get excited right away. I've got a really strange connection to them. I just love them. And I think what it, what it is with me and instruments is the happiness and the joy and the glory they bring, not only to those listening, but to the actual musicians who have played them because they've played from their heart, they've shared their love, they're putting themselves out there. And of course it brings emotion to those listening. So I've got a really kind of great obsession with musical instruments. So when I decided I wanted to make um, or do an antiqued looking violin, I put a general call on a marketplace and I did have people who were willing to part with their violins because they didn't want to play them anymore. But like I had said, I didn't want to um, work on a piece that was still playable because what if there was a musician or somebody wanting to learn how to play violin that could buy that piece from that person? What I did find though was I had a response from a gentleman who was a violin teacher on the island. But what he also does was is he repairs violins as well because he has violins he rents out to his young students. So this violin actually um, was broken when I got it. Um, he was actually just using it for parts. Now, I don't know if you can see, I hope you can. I'm gonna bring it a little closer to the camera. You can see right here, the violin actually was cracked. The neck is cracked because this piece was actually broken right off. It came in two pieces. So I got a killer duel. I think I paid $20 for the violin, which is actually a really great deal, uh, in hopes that I could do something with it. And I guess my plan was, if um, I couldn't do something with it, I could just stick it back together and have it as it was. And love it however I had to love it. But if I could, wouldn't it be really neat if I could turn it into a really great conversation piece to hang on our wall? So what I did was that is I took it, I didn't take the whole violin apart, of course. I took the strings off, um, the neck was broken. So the first thing I did was I glued, I re-glued with a good glue the neck of the violin to make sure um, that integrity was going to be back there again because even though I'm just using it for display, heaven forbid it broke in half and it would fall off the wall. Didn't want that. So I re-glued it. Next what I did was, and I know I'm gonna make people cringe, um, but this is what I did and it worked so wonderfully to help take off the finish. So I'm gonna show you the back of it. The back of the violin, I didn't do the back because I wanted you guys to be able to see the glare here. So what this violin, the color that it was, was, um, I did take some, a little bit of the finish off the middle, but it was a very high varnish on it. It was kind of, it's kind of an orangey sort of stain that are on these violins. And I didn't want that look because I wanted it to look old. I wanted it to have that used, loved heritage look that goes into instruments that have been played thousands of times, but have that really great history and story behind them. 
So what I did is I took 120 grit sandpaper and I sanded all over the violin. Now, what I didn't do is I didn't sand in circles. I didn't sand against the grain. I went with the grain and I gave it all a general scuff because I wanted to get that varnishy shiny finish off of the violin. And it took it off really well and it actually didn't take me too long to do it. Um, but it did come off in kind of like little dusty plastic pieces. So make sure that, you know, you take the right precautions when you're, you're doing a project because again, you wanna make sure you're staying healthy as you're making new and wonderful creations. So sanded it all off. I did spend extra um, time and pay extra attention to areas that would have naturally been worn over years and years and years of playing. Now I have seen enough antique violins to know where that wear area is. And where I found that wear area to be, of course, is right around the edges, because of handling, of course, but right in the middle there, where you know they would have got the war and the oils, um, the wear and the oils from your skin would have um, kind of made a groove or embedded itself, I guess, into that part of the violin, the center part where that is played um, with the strings, the bow, your body oils, the dirt, the smoke, all those things that come with age uh, when you're playing or when somebody has been playing a violin or a piece of an instrument for a very long time. So I paid special attention to that area because I wanted to give it a little extra wear. Of course, along the neck here I did as well because I wanted to make sure I'd have that wear look. And along the edges where the beautiful detail is, I gave it extra standing because I wanted to have extra wear there because that's where it would naturally have worn just from use, taking it in and out of your case, having it against the body, that kind of stuff. It's a, their edges that would have stuck out more, they would have been more and more. So I did sand those down a bit more, and of course, just along the outside edges of the violin. Wiped it all down again with a nice dry cloth to get that dust off. But next, and I think this was probably one of the um, big influencers of getting this that antique look with the kind of that darker graining streaky look is I took some steel wool and I actually took steel wool and I paid special attention to those areas that I wanted the extra wear and tear on. And of course around the outside edges. And then I steel wooled the whole outside of the violin because um, the 120 grit sandpaper would not have taken off all of that plasticky looking finish, but I wanted to make sure um, that I could get that finish off because I wanted it to look, of course, old. Now you're gonna hear our awesome Rezzy guard dog. She is, um, somebody is driving around outside and, and Rezzy's gonna, you know, do some huffing. That's what she does, but we're gonna keep going. So that's what, that's the next step of what I did. After that is I got some antiquing wax. And what I love about antiquing wax is it really accentuates areas of a project, whether you're working on a wood project, a dresser, um, doing frames, doing wood frames for pictures or pieces like this. And I use the antiquing wax to give it a little extra oomph in the dirtying areas that I wanted it to look dirty. Antiquing wax is so cool because it does, it gives that little extra highlight, I guess, to um, a piece, a piece that you wanna be noticed and looks a little more historically accurate. So I took a little bit of antiquing wax, of course, on a clean cloth, and I just rubbed it into the areas that I wanted the extra, the extra antiquing look to be. And of course, then I just gave a general, um, really, really light, uh, waxing all around with the antiquing wax because I wanted to have a little extra detail, especially around the edges and stuff of where it would look darker and dirty. And then wiped it all off, buffed it out because of course you wanna make sure that you get that antiquing wax off because you don't wanna get it on everything. My final step though was to use just a general clear wax because I use that on all my pieces that I do that involve wood, a general clear wax over the whole piece uh, because even though it's not going to be used or played, I still want it to have that protection from dust and that kind of stuff. And it does give it kind of a really nice a kind of finish on a piece that I've worked on. So that's how I antiqued this amazing little violin. I wish you guys could see it in person because it's actually, um, it has so much character to it. And it is a piece that I love and I hang it up on our in our house, in our kitchen. Um, oh, also, I just want you to see this because I love, I love the little details they have on these little edges here. 
I made sure that I gave a little extra sanding on those pieces because again, wear and tear on the higher points of the violin would have been a logical thing that would have happened. Now you'll notice on this violin, because it is one that has been repurposed, it's missing a few keys, but that's okay. It adds to the character of this wonderful piece. So that's how I antiqued a violin into a really, really great conversation piece that we have hanging in our home. So hopefully you guys take um, time to, you know, think about things you want to have in your home. When you're doing decor, it does not have to be expensive. Definitely not. I can tell you probably 98% of the pieces we have in our home have been found at thrift stores, garage sales, or marketplace or used sites. Or it's been something that we've actually found at the side of the road and we've, we've repurposed into something that really, really rocks. So that's our little tutorial today. Hopefully you guys will check out all our social media sites. Uh, give us a like, give us a follow and, uh, let me know if there's any other projects that you're interested in. Maybe I'll take them on and I'll show you guys how I would have done them and give you some ideas on how you could possibly do that as well. Thanks.